Hmm, that doesn't seem reasonable, does it? I'm not going to tell you more about it. I'm going to let them tell you in easy to comprehend Dick and Jane language next. <laughs> I told you before that progressives are really good at one thing, changing the name of something to get you to think it's about something that it's not. Tomorrow, only on the Insider Extreme at glennbeck.com, we're debuting a feature, The History of FDR's Bait and Switch. I've been making documentaries for my uh, website at glennbeck.com, Extreme Members. Um, you're not going to believe what this man said to get elected. Go to glennbeck.com right now and sign up for The Insider Extreme. Now, tonight we're kind of um, introducing something that we'll spend some time on history uh, with in the coming days and weeks. But I've been telling you tonight about the uh, push for global governance. Governance. But I don't want to tell you it myself. I'm going to let you see it for your own, uh, with your own eyes and your own ears, in their own words. We've pray played the president's speech at West Point from this weekend, but I want you to listen again with new ears of being pushed into a global world order. Listen to this. The international order we seek is one that can resolve the challenges of our times. Okay. An international order. This isn't new. This is not Obama. This is not the Democrats. They've been talking about this for a long time. The framework has been there. Now, what is the international order? For what? Show me the international order that has ever worked or that people want to get into. It wasn't the League of Nations. It's not the UN. But Obama is committed enough uh, to this order that he's now trying to sell it to the cadets at West Point, whom, by the way, were not too receptive to it. But watch this commercial. They've apparently already sold it to the U.S. Navy. America's Navy, a global force for good. I'm sorry, a global force for good? I know it's an American force with global reach. But that's not what they're trying to sell here. That's not what they're saying. I mean, they've already changed G.I. Joe in the, in the movies. Now this is a commercial for the U.S. Navy, a global force for good. The president has been speaking this way since he was a candidate. In fact, if you remember, when he, campa when he campaigned, strangely, for the first time ever, in Europe, he said this in Berlin. I speak to you not as a candidate for president, but as a citizen, a proud citizen of the United States and a fellow citizen of the world. Why was he over there? I mean, I'm sorry, I left my citizen of the world ID in my other pants. I hope they don't deport me now from the planet. There is no such thing as citizen of the world. We're Americans. We're humans. We're on planet Earth, but we're Americans. But for Obama, it's time we all just come together. Now is the time to join together through constant cooperation and strong institutions and shared sacrifice and a global commitment to progress to meet the challenges of the 21st century. I mean, you might be thinking, so what? The president of the United States has talked about a new international order, being citizens of the world, joining together through strong institutions and a global commitment to progress. But still, there's no epidemic of globalism. Well, here is the most frequent visitor of the White House, um, the advisor, Andy Stern. Listen. We created global trade. We created global finance. We created global companies. But we forgot to create a global government or a global organization or global regulators. But don't worry, he's working hard to fix that. Um, he said this, and today I send this message to every emerging global corporation, justice, keyword, family, community, and union are the same in every language. And wherever you go and whatever you do, a new global labor movement is coming to find you. Intimidation on a global scale. Al Gore sounded off, the, you know, the really neat things we can accomplish with global governance as well. Al Gore. But it is the awareness itself that will drive the change. And one of the ways it will drive the change is through global governance and global agreements. Okay. Uh, we had uh, 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 Bill Clinton talking at Yale, mentioning, you know, the whole global community again. Hillary Clinton has just talked about global citizens in her plea for global education. As students, as workers, or as global citizens. Okay. 
global education. Since when, when are there citizens of the world, or workers of the world? Oh, except for the communist slogans. These are all in their own words. It's out there in the open. There's no conspiracy. None. And it's not just Americans, and it's not just Democrats, it's Republicans as well. It's, it's a lot of people. I don't think you, but it's a lot of people that want to take us down this track, and they're going to push us into it. I want to show you what's happening in Europe and what they're saying over in Europe, because it's the same kind of stuff, except maybe even in plainer English. Back in a minute. America's Black Founders, the story of a former slave who founded the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Black preachers who fought in the American Revolution. It's the history you won't get in textbooks, but need to know. Friday at 5 p.m. This one is really, uh, this one's really, truly amazing. You don't want to miss this Friday. All right, I, I'm talking to you a little bit about global governance because we're talking about new banking regulation and everything else. It's all being pushed up to the globe, which we have been saying for a while. That's not where the answer lies, um, but that's where we're headed. And they will, they will tell us that, no, 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 it's not, not a big deal. But if we don't pay attention, it is our future. The, uh, the, uh, the world of, of, of sharing the wealth throughout the entire world. It's not good for America because you've got to equal out the entire world. We shared the words from everybody from Barack Obama to Hillary Clinton and Al Gore and Andy Stern, and this is just the, the, the tip of the iceberg. This is just to show you, okay, they're saying these words, but it's not just, it's not just here in America. It's uh, Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Listen. But in a globalized economy, we are going to have to take global responsibilities. And there going to, is going to have to be some semblance of global governance on these questions. Okay, the problem with this is, is how do you elect those people? Okay, right now, I just read in the, what was it, the Wall Street Journal, that, that, that our economy is tied to Europe. If the Europeans make mistakes, we suffer. Okay, it is a global economy, but who's deciding? Who's deciding? Surprisingly, George Soros agrees with Barack Obama, Stephen Harper, Hillary Clinton, Andy Stern, Al Gore, and many, many others. Or is it the other way around? They agree with George Soros. Watch. I think this would be the time because you really need to bring China into the creation of a new uh, um, uh, world order, financial world order. Let me give you another shocker. In France, they seem to be on board with this global thing as well. If we are not doing the job to put global finance and the global economy by way of consequence in a much more resilient uh, situation, uh, we could, again, not avoid a dramatic depression. Read uh, American history uh, from 1900 to 1913. This is what they said when they gave us the Fed. And it hasn't changed anything, has it? Jean-Claude made that speech at the Council of Foreign Relations, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure that's going to get the tinfoil hat people all excited. Again, give me, the, give me the UN, what the UN says about what a global governance is. Do you have that? About framework? You have to ask yourself, GOP or the Dems, okay? Governance is not government. It is framework of rules, institutions, and practices that set limits on behavior of individuals, organizations, and companies. The answer is not GOP. It's the grand old deity. Back in a minute. If you understand the global governance thing that they, I think the world is trying to knit us together on, you'll understand why the president and his allies don't ever want to talk about American exceptionalism. But America is an exceptional place. We've been an exceptional place because we're a special land. Don't forget that. Carry on from New York. Good night, America.